This is the Digital Factory Podcast. I'm John Bruner. Computer-aided design, or CAD, ties the entire manufacturing universe together. Over the last several decades, it's progressed along with computers. First, it ran on mainframes with command line interfaces, and then it became a desktop application, and now it's increasingly a cloud-based tool that you can run on a laptop, a mobile phone, or a tablet. In this episode of the Digital Factory podcast, we'll explore the latest generation of CAD and see how it's reshaping the way things are designed and engineered. This program is brought to you by Formlabs, which provides powerful, professional 3D printing on the desktop with the Form 2 SLA printer and the new Fuse 1 SLS printer. 3D printing is an essential technology for ideation, prototyping, design, and engineering, and it's also becoming a practical technology for manufacturing as well. With the Form 2, you can fabricate looks-like-feels-like models, you can make jigs and fixtures for manufacturing lines, and you can even 3D print injection molds and models for investment casting. Check out the full line of Formlabs printers and professional materials at formlabs.com. My guest today is John Hirschtick. He's the co-founder and CEO of Onshape. John, it's great to have you on the program. Great to be here, John. So, John, as uh, the the co-founder of Onshape and also the co-founder of SolidWorks a while ago, you've been present at uh, at several major inflection points in the development of computer-aided design. So um, tell us a bit about what it is that you're working on at, at Onshape today and how this represents you know, a, new, a new generation of CAD. Uh, thanks, John. Uh, at Onshape, we saw an opportunity to build a new generation of CAD that would help modern design teams work faster, you know, be more innovative, mm-hmm. Uh, get things done in less time, and honestly, also have more fun. What I've seen in the last 37 years in the CAD business and working with um, SolidWorks, as you noted, where I was for almost 20 years, is that the fundamental, the fundamentals of CAD work, but the process is really cumbersome mm-hmm. for teams, and that's just getting worse as mm-hmm. teams teams work in modern, agile ways. So the complexity of CAD today, of, of these workflows, maybe arises from the fact that CAD is used everywhere, right? And so more teams have to collaborate using uh, CAD, and this becomes complex. Yeah, we find that modern design teams are no longer located under one roof. They're spread out. Um, they're, they're spread out because of geographic um, geographic mm-hmm. diversity. People are in multiple places. Corporate diversity, instead of one company, you're doing a lot of outsourcing or um, uh, you're using consultants and contractors. You're involving people um, like like customers who will never be a mm-hmm. consultant or a contractor who are a customer. Customers are getting involved in the process. Executive management is getting involved. So there's more actors and it's changing every day. You know, new people come mm-hmm. on and off the team. And so the first issue is just that. It's, it's multi, um, multi-location distributed teams. Second issue is everyone wants to move faster. Mm-hmm. They don't have time anymore for complex workflows. They want to do things in parallel. They want to do things in a highly iterative way. They don't want to do these sequential Gantt chart driven Mm -hmm. flows because they don't have time anymore. If they work that way, they're not going to be competitive. And finally, everyone wants to be innovative. Mm -hmm. And in some, some cases, the, the iterative nature I talked about earlier, one of the reasons people want to do that is they want to innovate and they, they don't, whether I talk to, to, um, to I'll talk to everyone from single individuals starting a new company, working with a small team, to CTOs of some of the largest companies on earth, and they all have the same priorities. And so, um, yeah, so that's the, those are some of the, the problems you have, and CAD is, CAD is exacerbating that in the old state, and we're trying to, to improve it for the future. So you have these situations where um, a lot of different teams now are interacting to develop a design together, and uh, the, the classic way this seems to manifest is that you wind up with a lot of files floating around on Dropbox or something, and they're called like John underscore final underscore final V2. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so how, how is it that, uh, that you're addressing that at Onshape? Well, we saw that, that honestly, that the whole idea of copying files and software, downloading software, copying files, you have all those problems. The one you mentioned, the, 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 and with the software itself, who's on what version, it's impossible to be in the right mm-hmm. version. So the way we fix it is really pretty simply. We, 
are the first and only um, professional CAD system where the CAD system and the CAD data are stored in one place in the cloud and they're never copied anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really, it sounds like a breakthrough idea for CAD, but it's the way any other kind of business software works, mm -hmm. whether it's email or, or um, accounting software, HR software, Salesforce, NetSuite, Zendesk, Workday, any modern software um, leader works this way. There's mm -hmm. a database um, and the, the software system itself sits in the cloud. And so by architecture, we eliminate most of the problems associated with these old install and copying file around processes. Mm -hmm. You're, you're looking in real time at a global single source of truth, no matter where you are on earth, no matter what computing device you're using, uh, no matter how many people you're working with, everyone's finally looking at the same model with no need for copying. Version control and, and revisioning, like you talk about final labeling something as, as revision A or sent to manufacturing, mm -hmm. those are labels you attach to states in a global database. And again, instantly in real time, everyone can see them. Very simple idea, um, required us to rebuild everything from scratch. It seems like there's an important cultural change that arises from this too, that, that's related to what you just mentioned, where uh, you can extend a tool to everyone in your company. And um, we, right. we talk about this at Formlabs too, that you know, just the, in the same way that you give all of your employees email, you give all of your salespeople access to Salesforce, you give everyone in your manufacturing access to your QC software, um, you ought to give all of your uh, designers and engineers access to prototyping and, and 3D printing. And in, in this case, uh, you know, you mentioned a few folks who are now involved in the design process and who maybe interact with CAD, uh, who might not have interacted with CAD in a world where everyone needs, um, you know, individual licenses that cost thousands of dollars a piece. Right, right. I mean, the old model of CAD licensing was predicated on the idea that the CAD system was a thing in the corner used by an engineering group that was in the act in one little room, mm -hmm. you know, it was never. And so that's where you got this idea of expensive licenses and codes and installing it on one carefully curated computer, you know, and, um, uh, and so I, and, and it, it, I didn't really, um, I, I wish I could say I invented these ideas. I really li just listen to customers. I would mm -hmm. visit customers and they'd spend, hours, you know, telling me all the time that's being wasted. Um, and then, like you say, it discourages you from giving the tools to your extended team. And guess what? If you want to be innovative and moving fast, you want to give the tools to your extended team. Yeah. You know, and uh, whether it's at Formlabs or most any other company. So I totally agree with you. We, we With Onshape, we're not only giving you um, a uh, a cloud-based CAD capability and data management. We're also giving you an incredible ability to deploy it. And we, we've actually built the tools you would imagine we would have built so you can deploy large numbers of users very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we, we also even now attach to single sign-on systems in our enterprise edition. Mm -hmm. So for companies, I know some, some of your audience won't know what this is about and some will be nodding <laughs> their heads if you're using a single sign-on system like Okta, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a way to sort of um, meta deploy all these systems you talked about. So you, you can you can deploy or de-deploy when employees leave. You know mm -hmm. everything you talked about your email, your your maybe you're using agile process tools like Jira or something. Mm -hmm. uh, those mm -hmm. sorts of tools you just you you have one single sign on and one point of provisioning, and we're able to participate in that because that only works with cloud based systems. You're not going to do that with installed. Stuff. The other issue is everyone's using multiple computing devices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you say deploy the system, I mean, you know, in the old days, it meant one computer. Like I said, it, today, when you say you give each employee email, you give them, you give them access to the other systems you mentioned, um, you don't give it to them on one particular computer. Mm -hmm. They're going to use it on multiple devices. They're going to use it on their, their phones, their tablets. Maybe maybe you even probably want them using it on their computer at home when they're home on the weekend. Maybe they didn't mm -hmm. bring their laptop or they don't have it with them and they get a call from someone. They're able to use all these systems. Um, that's the modern way. As you uh, see, you know, Onshape rollout and, and companies adopt it, uh, are you aware of any cultural changes that are happening as a result of, you know, giving it to, to more people within the organization and making it possible to sort of collaborate in real time? 
Yeah, I would say there are cultural changes happening in our customers. And they're the things I've just been mentioning. Um, one is um, people, uh, people find that some of the processes they used to need that are processes they just don't need anymore. Mm. <laughs> like they, they don't need to have a formal process and a corresponding time delay to distribute a uh, design update because mm -hmm. they can just put a revision on and everyone sees it. Um, they, um, they're getting back. Uh, so that's one thing. The idea of a CAD expert who has to be installing and care and feeding the system, that kind of goes away. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing is, like you say, like we were just talking about, more people get to see the live design. Mm -hmm. And that's a cultural, that's a real cultural change for them. Um, the other one is freedom to, to try things. Um, I've spoken to customers where they're like, where there's a reluctance once the design is, once the, in the file-based world, once you get the assembly right and all the files finalized, you're like, I don't want to mess with that, you know, because mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a, there's an overhead, there's an activation energy required to move it forward. We tell our customers, go ahead and innovate. You never lose a previous state of work that was good. You're never going to lose that. It's never going to go away. You can always go back to any point in time. And that causes a cultural change for people. It's like, what? You mean, you know, they don't have to worry anymore about, oh, I'm about to ruin a good, you know, a good copy of my assembly because it, I can always go back to the good mm -hmm. copy of the assembly. So people tend to, to try more things. Um, another thing, another, I mean, I'm just going on another one is where people work. We have a customer who said, you know, we now are doing design work. It sounds crazy. We're doing design work while we're driving around mm -hmm. and, you know, <laughs> going between clients. And he's like, I never thought we would do that, but now we're doing it. You right. know? And so, so there's, there's a lot of um, the, the cultural expectations. In some cases, it increases pressure on people because there's this feeling of, um, of well, you ought to be able to do that from wherever you are and get it to me immediately. Right, right, right. <laughs> and Just, you can't hide, and there's more transparency, and that's sometimes not good. Some people resent that. Right, it's just like having email on your phone at home on the weekend. Yep, yep. And also, the boss can see what's going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like for instance, for instance, um, you you know, you send something out to a contractor, and they're they're not working on it. You know, they're not working on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting way to manage. It yeah. Say, yeah. It can't be like, well, I'll send you the file Tuesday. I, you know, I'm half done. It's like, no, I can see you haven't started yet. <laughs> and our newest, our newest edition, our enterprise edition of Onshape lets you get um, a reports, analytics of which projects are being used, where, when, and by whom. You can look at it from any angle, mm -hmm. you know, by the project, by the person, by location. And you really get a lot of insight. And, and that also means that people have to be aware that they can't hide, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. to speak. So you've mentioned a few ways that uh, doing CAD mm -hmm. in the cloud can, you know, streamline the design process and the engineering process. Um, and in this sense, I think of... Uh, what you're doing is being similar to what uh, Google Docs does for word processing or what GitHub does for programming. It kind of centralizes uh, work and turns it into a continuous process rather than kind of a broadcasting process where you say, I've done my revision, I'm sending it out, I'm publishing it to my organization, I have to wait a week for them to respond. Um, so you see the design and engineering processes getting smoother and more continuous. Do you think there's a limit? I mean, is, is CAD going to look like, uh, you know, distributed programming, um, or, or Google docs work a few years from now, or, or will it retain aspects of the, um, you know, of the hardware development process that are maybe a little bit slower, a little bit more particular? Well, that's a great point, John. We, we like to think that you, you really, you really, um, uh, congratulations. You really get the, the essence of it, but you know, you're right that, that we are on shape is like Google docs and its collaboration and its deployment capability and its platform that run, run on anything platform. It's a little like GitHub in terms of formal, um, release control mm -hmm. as well. That's super important in manufacturing. So, you know, Google docs lacks that kind of formality around releases and versions. It lacks 
Docs um, workflow, though interestingly, my children use Google Docs for education, which mm -hmm. has some workflow in it, which is really huh. cool because they don't offer that to corporate clients, but they can turn in homework and get it graded and so yeah. forth. That's actually a workflow activity that isn't present. So we had to look at it. We While we borrowed a lot of thinking and were inspired by Google Docs, inspired by GitHub, Ultimately, what we've built with Onshape is a unique approach that is not exactly like either of those systems that is, as you say, aimed at the rigors of hardware manufacturing, hardware design. So, for instance, we have formal um, release management where mm -hmm. you say, you know, I'm going to designate, I want to release a uh, release package with um, what we call releasable objects. Like you can release an assembly, you can release a drawing, you can release parts. Um, uh, you can you can release files of any arbitrary type too. If you've brought in a, a data file or data set from another system, you put this together and you say, I want to release this. Um, I want to promote it to a new release level, and it enters a workflow with formal approvals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from different people that you need. And and we um, we have a very formalized process, and you'll see. Um, pending states on the release. Now, what's cool in Onshape is you can just keep working. It never stops anyone's workflow. There's there's no locking, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no there's no notion of locking. You know, you, you you make that release package. If other people do work, it's it's incremental. We also introduced the concept of of obsoleting releases, which of course is very important in hardware manufacturing. These are capabilities that even small manufacturers need, but that previously were only available in these super high-end PDM and PLM mm -hmm. systems that out of reach for most companies and came with all kinds of slowdowns that, you know, that people don't really want to use. Now they're at your fingertips. So the answer is, yeah, Google Docs and GitHub were inspirations. We tried to borrow what were the good parts of PDM and PLM thinking and ultimately have wrapped them into a unique approach that Onshape uniquely combines elements into a system that we think serves our target market of professional organizations designing, you know, new new hardware products. So this type of you know continuous development that you're describing, where you're not locking things and sort of uh, you know publishing uh, designs as numbered releases, seems to lend itself to a hardware development process that looks a lot more like a software development process. Where you know Google right. Google Docs right. is is released uh, multiple times a day, right? And and as a user, maybe oh, you're yeah. not even aware of it, um, but the the software is updated constantly. Uh, there's this dream that maybe really it's released multiple times a day. I didn't know that. That's cool to know yeah. that that it is. I mean, they don't they don't that. technically call it a release, but it's you know it's happening mm -hmm. um, often. Some days, multiple times a day to fix bugs, to to introduce new features, and so on. Um, and it's it's almost invisible to the user. Sometimes you refresh and the UI looks slightly different. But um, there's this dream that someday hardware development could look like that too. Mechanical design could look like that. That if you have a manufacturing mm. process that's flexible enough and a design process that's sort of continuous and incremental, you could you know tweak a um, an enclosure and send it to your to your manufacturer. And if retooling isn't too onerous, you know you introduce that incremental change into your into your product yeah well i like to think that we're the with our new generation approach to the platform we give people the tools they need to do that mm -hmm. now unfortunately engineering and product design is still hard work yeah yeah you know, we we haven't made it we haven't made it you know easy to build great products we've made it easier and we've made it possible you could implement those kinds of processes with Onshape, and I think pretty much uniquely, mm -hmm. because you know, because of the unique nature of our system, you could have um, faster moving, more continuous. Like I wonder if we'll ever have what you're talking about. It's sort of like continuous deployment right. in hardware, where yeah. you make a change and then, boom, products are coming off the line, and you know, the the next one gets something different. We're a long way from that because of the practical realities of hardware development. I like to think that what Formlabs is doing is helping that too, mm -hmm. because you've now made it possible to have such flexibility in manufacturing. I know we see in the many Onshape customers that use uh, Formlabs printers 
we see them, you know, they're, they're able to do fast iteration. The, the changes to shape mean almost nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they're free now. That's right. You know, that you can say, you know, we're not worried about recutting a mold or, you know, all the delays and costs with that. And so I imagine that the, it's really about the tools working together. I think mm-hmm. the combination of a Formlab style 3D printing um, uh, uh, and and seeing your customers starting to do it in volume mm-hmm. for manufacturing, mm-hmm. which I know is certainly mm-hmm. seems seems to be on the agenda with the fuse and, and <laughs> right, you know right. and uh, uh, that 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 uh, we'll go hand in hand with that and give people the tools to do it. But ultimately, it's up to them to have this better and better process. But yeah, and the ultimately. The first companies to figure out how to work like this mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with more continuous stream of changes, they're going to outcompete the ones that are still stuck in old, right. <laughs> old release cycles. Right. You know, and uh, can I make another observation sure. that that you touch on something that I just want to bring in here that the power of our on shape platform of a modern full cloud platform for CAD is also changed how we can work mm-hmm. as a developer mm-hmm. of CAD. Mm-hmm. And how we support our users, you know, we're able to support users in ways that just couldn't be done in the old world because we can, a a user can say, hey, I need help with this model. And and they let us jump in in real time, only with their permission. We can't Mm -hmm. do it unless they, but they can, they they will invite us in to help them. And our experts do that all the time, every day. They jump in in a few minutes, they jump in, help resolve an issue. And then, then the customer removes that permission and we no longer have permission. We have no Mm -hmm. copies, nothing. And so we're doing that. And of course, as you know, on shape releases, we release every three weeks. We don't okay. do it during every day, yeah. but every three weeks and, and every user in the world instantly is upgraded. All the data is, uh, is compatible. There's no downtime associated with that. And those fast updates means we deliver functions faster than our competitors mm-hmm. in the same way. We hope that our customers deliver functions faster than their competitors. Right, right. And it smooths everything out. So it's, I mean, something you've you've hinted at uh, in a couple of your your uh, ideas here is that the um, the entire sort of product development process when you're using software like this can uh, collapse into a synchronous process rather than, as you said, a Gantt chart driven process. Exactly. Um, where, exactly. You know, you might have a an industrial designer, and then the industrial designer locks in, and then you have a mechanical designer. The mechanical designer gets the you know, an, an envelope that they're allowed to work in, everything else is locked, the electronics people are doing their thing, um, it becomes possible to do that synchronously. So so not only does it make that faster, but it also kind of begins to collapse some of the areas of expertise, that if you're maybe an industrial designer, um, it makes it possible to work a bit closer with the mechanical designers. Uh, if you're If you're an electronics person and you need to push the enclosure out just a little bit, you can kind of do that and add a note, let the industrial designer know that this has happened, right? But it, it becomes a, a more continuous series of, of interactions rather than like groups of expertise taking command of the project for a few weeks at a time and pushing it forward, going to, you know, DFM at the end and then publish to the manufacturer at, at the very end. So it, it makes it, you know, a more fluid sort of continuous thing and it lets, um, professionals begin to like operate in each other's area of, uh, of expertise in each other's domain. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's well said. And, uh, and again, that, and that gives a, uh, more flexible workforce too. I was speaking to a CTO of a large company about that topic last week, just what you're saying about this. They don't want the, 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 the siloed experts Mm -hmm. with the, with the serial workflows. It's not a great way to utilize their skills. It's not good for innovation. It's not good for speed. Right. And, uh, uh, and so we, we make the tools that enable that, but ultimately uh, enable a better workflow, but ultimately it's up to the customer to use it in the right way. You know, it just, you know, just like with 3d printers, you can make the gear, but it's up to the customer to adopt it and use it to make a real impact on their business process. Excellent. So now we'll move on to a recurring segment where I ask our guest um, about his or her favorite tool. And um, guests come up with uh, all sorts of answers, some of them professionally related, some of them personal things that you'd find in a kitchen. Sometimes they're pieces of software, sometimes they're uh, pieces of steel. So John Hirschtick, tell us about your favorite tool. 
Well, my favorite tool is my um, my Uniball Pure Malt four color pen. Mm that I use. And um, I've, I adopted four color writing with my pen a few years ago um, or readopted it. Cause we all had these as a kid. So mm-hmm. it prints in black minus set up with black, blue, green, red, and it has the pencil, okay. which I really use. And these sorts of pens were popular when I was a kid, you know, mm-hmm. you get them like cheap pens, but no one professionally ever used mm-hmm. it. And then a friend of mine who travels to Japan often on business, about, oh, I'm going to say about five years ago, he came back from Japan and brought me this particular Uniball pen. It's called a Pure Malt, and the barrel is made of actual wood. Hmm. I think it's meant to be made of the wood that would be used in a cask of um, of single malt scotch. <laughs> okay, now I'm not a scotch expert to know, and it could be sometimes there's Japanese style, you know, liberalizations of English, of American or mm-hmm. European mm-hmm. cultural things. But anyway, the, the the barrel, the part your fingers hold, is is wooden. And it's mm-hmm. real nice feeling, and it's a four color pen. And my friend said this is all the rage with Japanese executives huh. are all using these, and I'm like, okay, thanks. You know, I threw it in my pocket and thought I'd give it a try. Well, it really has changed the way I take notes. And my runner-up tool that was a hard time deciding, and they go hand in hand, literally, Uh is my Shinola branded journal books made in Detroit by Shinola, a great manufacturing success story, Mm -hmm. I think. And so my Shinola journal book paper and my four-color Uniball Pure Malt pen um, let me take notes and using the colors on the notes really helped me organize in ways that I really didn't imagine. It's also always having all four colors at your fingertips, not changing pens midstream. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I change colors without looking at the pen. <laughs> I'm so used to it. So in the middle of a meeting, red is my action color. I'll switch over to red mm-hmm. and there's a small click, but I can do it without looking because yeah. I feel the, I know where the pen colors are. So my favorite tool, Uniball um, Pure Malt four, four color pen made in Japan. Wonderful executive tool for, for note taking productivity. And my runner up is my Shinola made in Detroit journal books. Excellent. Well, John, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. If, uh, if listeners want to find you and see what you're doing at Onshape, where, where should they look? Um, you can look at, well, our website is onshape.com. Um, and uh, uh, you can, uh, I'm on Twitter at Jay Hirschtick. All right. John Hirschtick, co-founder and CEO of Onshape. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, John. It's been a pleasure. Check out the show notes that are attached to this episode for links to some of the things that John Hirschtick mentioned including that Uniball pen. And remember that you can subscribe to the Digital Factory podcast on your favorite podcasting platform, like iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher or Overcast or Pocket Casts. We'd love to see you back for a future episode. The Digital Factory podcast is brought to you by Formlabs. Visit formlabs.com to learn about the Form 2 Professional Desktop 3D Printer. You can do a lot of stuff with it. You can make prototypes, you can 3D print injection molds, You can 3D print jigs and fixtures for manufacturing. You can even 3D print forms that you can use for investment casting of metal. Visit formlabs.com to learn more. The Digital Factory podcast is produced by Elise Courier and edited by Inky Stainsworth. I'm John Bruner.